Hi, this is Marcy Turner, and today I'm going to show you how to access Nearpod, connect it to your Google account, and all the features that Nearpod has to offer. Okay, so to get started with this tutorial, you're going to want to head over to Nearpod.com. You're going to click the Login button. It's going to take you to the sign-in screen. It gives you many options, but if you're an Orie County School employee, you're definitely going to want to click the Sign-in with Google. Your first time signing in, you're going to need to allow access to your Google Drive and Google account. Once you do that and you allow it, You'll go to the main screen, which is under my lessons. It starts you there. I like to make sure that when I'm logged in, I have premium plus here. Our district pays for the premium plus. So I think that's awesome. We get unlimited storage. So you can store all of your lessons in here if you wanted to. All right. So the first thing I do as a teacher when I'm looking for a lesson or I have an idea, I like to head over to the Nearpod library. Once I click on that, I can see that they break it down by grades, subjects, content types. Um, there's different publishers that do publish different content on here. They have holiday lessons and fun things. I personally will filter you know, to the certain grade level or subject that I'm teaching so that I'm just seeing content that's geared towards that specific subject. You can also filter by standards, which I think is a new feature, and I do like this idea as well. It gives you, if you're teaching to a certain standard and you want to make sure you hit that standard, you can filter by standard now, which is a nice new feature. Okay, so I'm just going to showcase an example, a Nearpod curated lesson. I teach English, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Um, I can do, let's see, grade levels. So maybe I just want high school. And so this is gonna filter the content to what specifically I'm looking for. I could alternatively also type in a certain topic. Um, maybe I'm teaching a poem or I'm teaching one thing I think I taught on here was ethos, pathos, and logos. So I typed in, well, I typed in ethos, pathos, and logos. And then they had some content. They have a video, they have lessons that are made. So I'm gonna show the art of persuasion here. This one was created by the Nearpod team. So I can hit preview. And once I hit preview, that allows me to see the standard that it's achieving, um, how many, and then plus 71. So all the standards it's achieving. You can teach it straight from this, but I like to make sure that when I look at this, I want to make sure it has all the things that I am interested and need for my lesson. So if this is something that looks good to me, and you can see they have interactive, they have like their essential question, which is very helpful. And then it tells the students what they're going to be learning about today. And it even gives you time frames, which again, I love this. This is awesome. So if I want to add this to my lessons, that makes a copy of it in my lesson library. And then I can from there also edit it, edit lesson. And then I can even take out slides that I don't maybe necessarily like. I can edit the lesson myself. Um, you might want to do that because I find that this one specifically is quite long and lengthy. It does have collaboration. It does quiz them and asks them to draw. So there's a lot of different interactive items that it asks the students to do. So I do love that. Once you're done, when you edit it in here, you can also add your own slides in. So you can add your own content in, your own pictures, or you can just click and delete. So if I didn't want this one, I could just delete that slide. And then it's my lesson. I've made it my own. So you can even from this preview it. I also like to do that. I recommend doing that because it might look in one way on the screen when you're editing it, but you want to make sure like this is what the students will see on their screens. So when you are teaching your pod, you're going to activate a lesson and we'll get into that in a minute. You're going to give a kid the kids a code or paste a code somewhere on your on your Schoology account. So I go through and I make sure everything looks good, that the content is clickable, that the video works, that sort of thing. Because sometimes if you didn't, you're not sure exactly what you're getting. So anyways, that's one thing that you can do. Again, this is the student preview. So this is what they see on their screen and they can just type on here and it shows up. Pending approval, that's a setting you can turn on as a teacher. I can go to Google as a student and include an image for my thinking. This is a collaborate board. I love this one. Okay, so that's the preview. And so I can just save an exit. Make sure you save an exit. Otherwise, any changes you've made will not save. So this is how you edit a lesson. Take something from Nearpod, one of their lessons, make it your own, and edit it right in Nearpod. Alternatively, you may, as a teacher, already have Google Slides that you just want to make more interactive and put them on Nearpod. 
I personally love doing this for the very simple fact is that I can hold students who are absent accountable. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you go over to your drive and then maybe I have a Google lesson or maybe I wanna create just a Google Slides. So I open up a Google Slide. Now you're going to want to install the extension for Nearpod. So you'll have to do, you know, add-ons and get the extension. I have this, so it opens right up when I click on Nearpod. So once that loads, it gives you the same options in Nearpod. I personally do like to create my own lessons in here if I'm starting from scratch. I just like the view of Google Slides better. So if I wanted to maybe start off with an open-ended question, I could just click on that and it adds in a whole slide. So I put my question here. Okay, and then you can also add a timer. You can enable, if, if you want to enable student audio recordings, you could add an image or an audio or something else to catch their attention. And then you just click save. And then once you do that, it will load into and create an, another whole slide and make sure you don't delete this slide. But there it is, open any question. Now you can't see what the question was that you've typed in there. So one thing I will say is like, I like to make sure I keep track of my own of what I've done, but you could also just click edit this slide to view what you've done with it to see that it's the right thing that you wanted in there. Okay, so in addition to doing like an open-ended question, I wanna go through some of the options here. So you can add in audio, videos that you find online, we talked about Collaborate Board. Draw it is just simply asking them to draw. They can use their finger on their keypad. I find maybe this might match more with math than my content area specifically, but I do find this useful as something that maybe a teacher might want to see them apply a skill. That's going to take you across that, you know, rigor divide that we're always trying to get our students to. The field trip option is great, I think, for social studies teachers or someone who teaches geography or that sort. It's a VR pre-curated field trip that actually Nearpod made. And even cooler, you could have them get VR headsets, or if your school district had them, you could rent them. I, I'm sure you can get them somewhere. That's also an experience that's Flipgrid, if you're familiar with that. You can also integrate into Nearpod, um, matching pairs, mainly for vocabulary, if you need to do that. And then PDF Viewer. So I use PDF Viewer as a teacher of you know, reading and writing. I can put in a short story and make it a whole slide, and they can actually view the entire PDF on one slide when I click to go to that during my lesson. And so they can actually read it right on Nearpod. They don't have to leave Nearpod, which I think is awesome because when you get too many tabs opening with kids, they get confused. And of course, polls and quizzes. The other thing I do also like is time to climb. Believe it or not, my high school juniors love it. They think it's interactive and fun. You can put your questions in here and then your answer types there. You can even do images. You can test their knowledge. Now they do have pre-curated times climbs. So you can check over here. You could, you could type on them and see, you could click on one of them and see if that matches what you're teaching or make your own, add questions. Okay. So I think that is a good overview of what you can do with Nearpod. Again, you can do all of that in the Nearpod um, online platform, but I, I personally, if I'm creating my own lesson, I want to do it on Google Slides. I can also do a better job of designing the slides and adding in things from Canva. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Nearpod. So that's how you make and edit lessons on Nearpod. I do find that I love that it saves here in my library. Sometimes when I make multiple copies, I'll just simply delete it. As you can see, I have a couple here. I just want to showcase one thing that I did do. So I had one lesson that I made on a short story that we were reading, but this was something that the district made, Google Slides. And then I took those Google Slides from the, from the content curriculum maps, and I turned it into a Nearpod lesson. What I wanted to show you, you can do live participation. So this is, you're in the classroom, you're in front of your kids, you want, you want them to be with you. And so it creates this code. I can copy the link, I can post it. 
um, you even have a co-teacher link if you want your co-teacher in on what you're teaching. And then you just go and it changes their screen too. So there's no confusion. This is the student view, by the way. But when I click the teacher, this is what I'm going to see when I'm up on the board. Uh, there's a couple of things I do want to point out on when they have a question. You may not want names. No, I don't have any participants right now, but you may not want names listed. So I can actually click on hide student answers um, or hide student names. And I, that way I can still see their answers and they'll show up right here and I can read them right from here, but I don't know whose name it is. And that leaves it a little bit more anonymous. I do like that. Um, from this, if I'm like, okay, I'm done, it's your turn. I can do student paste mode, which is more there on their own, kind of on their own time and frame and how they're doing it. If I go back now, if you want to return to the same session, cause you're going to grade their answers, you're going to want to hit, you can resume it later. Do you want to leave this session? You can, yes, I want to leave it. And then the same session is going to show up in your reports. So that's when I go back and I'm grading to see if they've done what I've asked them to do in the slides. Like for example, here at the end of the year, I did this one. It tells me the time, how many students, um, and then I can click on and see what they actually wrote and if I wanted to grade it that way. I typically use it as more participation grade, but you can see it'll calculate a total grade on what they did on like my time to climb, the fill in the blank score. I did an open-ended question. Now, if you actually want to go back in and read those, you do need to click on their name and then you can read what they actually wrote. Okay. So that's an important thing. Key is the reports is where it's going to house how your students did. So if I go back to my lessons, the one thing I also wanted to showcase was student pace. So I do always post student pace anyways on my classroom. I just copy this link here. This one is for my students who are absent. So I leave that purely for them so that when they come to me and say, I was absent yesterday when I missed, I'm like, there's a Nearpod. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more video tutorials.